All right, welcome to another episode of Class Haven Farms. So what are we doing today? Well, we're going to do a tune-up on the Husqvarna 455 Rancher. I got some wood to cut tomorrow, so I figure I might as well just go ahead and do a tune-up and bring you guys along for the ride. So we're going to be doing a spark plug, a fuel filter, and an air filter. So welcome back. Uh, again, if you haven't, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me a comment, kind of follow me along on the, on my channel here. I really appreciate the support. So, as I said, we are doing a tune-up on our Husqvarna 455 Rancher. Um, first thing you want to do is pop your cap off. You can just use your your wrench for that that you uh, that you got. I kind of talked about this in my last video. This is one another one of the reasons why I like the longer wrench because it just makes it easier uh, when you're working on your saw, especially in the field or something. If you start having a problem, it just makes it a little easier. So you have three screws, so you want to make sure you take those out. Uh, you also want to make sure you press down your decompression button that is on the top just to make it easier to get this plastic cover off. And you want to push your, train, your chain brake forward so it'll make it easier. So it's three bolts, or three screws, and this lifts right off. Once you lift this off, here is your air filter, here is your spark plug, so we'll do those first. So the air filter, you just pop this pin off here. It's really easy, it just slides out the top, there you go. All right, so that's gonna be a problem. The air filter that I got from my Husqvarna dealer is not the right air filter. Awesome. Okay, no big deal. Uh, I guess I'll just have to put this one back on for now, and I'll have to get a new one. And, I don't know, do a 30-second video in. Um, when I pull this off, you can see it's kind of dirty there on the top. So one thing, and uh, I got this from a... Uh, from a guy that I've been watching for a while, really, really good channel. So if you guys ever get a chance, check it out, Homestead J. Uh, so if Jay's seeing this, hey buddy, give you a shout out. Um, he actually just did a video talking about um, getting your saw ready for winter time. So if anybody wants to check in on his channel, it's Home Homestead J. Check it out. But he brought up a good point. If you're ever working on this to keep the dirt out of the inside of the carburetor, just pull your choke out because your choke will close everything off. So. Good, uh, good hint, Jay. So, just thought I'd put that on there, and anybody check his channel out, and kind of give him some support along the way. Also, I'm sure he would appreciate it. All right, so all I'm doing is just kind of knocking some of this dirt and stuff off that was under the air filter. Uh, again, for right now, I'm gonna put this air filter back on. And uh, you know what? It's a Friday. Uh, I had to take off work today, so maybe I'll just run out and go pick up a new uh, air filter and just take this one with me. All right, so now we're going to take our spark plug off. So you pop your boot off, spark plug's right here. Again, use your wrench that came with it. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And the spark plug, and I'm going to put a list of all these products uh, in the description. Uh, again, with an Amazon link, so if you want to buy it that way, you can. I got all this stuff from 231 Farm Center, so I'll also put a link in for them. Uh, so the spark plug for this is uh, made by NGK. That is the part number there. You guys can see that. So it's uh, B as in boy, P as in Paul, M as in Mike, R as in Robert, 7, A as in Adam. So that's the part number, and it's uh, NGK spark plug. So the gap on these spark plugs 
is uh, at least what it says in the manual is a uh, I think I had my feeler gauge. It's a, a 0 0.05 millimeter or 0 0.002 in inches. All right, so you can't just take a spark plug right out of the box and just stick it in there. You have to gap it. Okay, so you have to gap that spark plug. So the best way to do it, you can get a, this is just a little cheap gapper that I have. I need the tool here. Now these little prongs, if they're the right size, um, you can a lot of times just take the prong, slide it in there. And if you just get a little bit of pull in between the top of the spark plug and the arc here, then you're good to go. Um, but I can't use these because these are not the right size. So what I have is a feeler gauge. So this is called a feeler gauge. And this thing being 0 0.05 millimeters is pretty small. It's not a, not a huge gap. That's, that's it right there. I'll hold that close so you guys can see it. <clears throat> so I'll take my feeler gauge and just kind of run her in. And if I don't feel any resistance on it as I run it in there on the gap, then I just take this wrench on these little cutouts here. Put them in the top there. Kind of hard doing this. And you're going to push down or pull up depending on where you need your gap to be. So mine, I need to go down a little bit. because She's not quite there. Just put a little bit of tension on it. Not hard because you will break that thing off. And then you got to buy a new spark plug. And I'm just looking for that grab. So it's still not quite where I want it. So I'm going to gap her down a little bit more. Take my feeler gauge. And to me, that feels pretty good. So the other thing that I like to do is I like to run some anti-seize anytime I do spark plugs or anything like that. Um, Anti-seize is just something to keep it from, uh, if it gets any kind of moisture or anything like that, it's not going to rust up. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty regular on these, changing them out and things like that. So it's not like they sit in there for years on end, but, you know, it could get a little moisture or something like that. So all I do is run a little bit of anti-seize through the threads. And then just screw the uh, spark plug in by hand. Once you get it in by hand... Take your wrench again, and guys, don't go too tight on this um, because it doesn't take much. So I usually, once it gets tight, just a little quarter, and that's it. Don't don't push that on too tight because you will crack it. You could crack the spark plug uh, inside, or you can crack crack the uh, cylinder head itself, the top part. And then you're just going to push your button on and wait for that little clicky sound. All right, so that's done. So at least the spark plug's done. Now we got the fuel filter. So the fuel filter on these looks like this. And again, I'll have part numbers listed for everything. So just pull your cap out. Again, it's just got two little springs on it so you can take this thing out. Kind of set it down on a clean rag so when you go to put it back in there, it's no big deal. And sometimes you can get it with your finger. If you can't, you can grab a pair of needle nose and get it that way. Or you can cheat and use your wrench. So all you're going to do is pull this out, you're going to pull the rubber hose off, so it just has kind of a nipple there, you pull that off, grab your new one, and just push that down and in. And guess what, that's not right either. Good night. At least the spark plug was right. But... Alright, since I couldn't finish up the uh, tune-up there because I didn't have the right fuel filter, I just put the old one back on and I'll just pick up a new one and get it done. But you guys kind of got the gist of it. 
on how to how to take the old filter out. If you have the correct one, how to put the correct one on. So the next thing I'm going to do, I uh, figured I'll just run you guys kind of how I sharpen my chains on my chainsaws. I like to do everything by hand. It's just what I'm more comfortable with. So the first thing I do is I have a white marker. Oh, you can use white out. You can use a black uh, permanent marker, whatever, whatever you want to use. And I just put a white mark on the teeth so that as I'm sharpening it, I know where I've already done and where I need to. And then once that white mark gets all the way back around, then I know where I started and then I'm done. Um, I like to put them in a vise so that they don't move and lock your chain break forward so that it minimizes the chain moving around. Now, the sharpener that I use, I like this. Uh, it's called Sharp Force by Husqvarna. It's uh, your two-in-one sharpener. It's very similar to the steel uh, all-in-one sharpeners that they have. It does the teeth and it does the rakers. And it has the file on the top. Uh, the reason why I have this is because my chain is at 730 seconds. And as, as of right now, steel doesn't make that all-in-one in the 730 seconds. So I have one in the three eighths, but that's for my other soul. So for this one, I have this. Um, so basically all you do is you look for the line that's on the top of the teeth. And if anyone doesn't know what that looks like, there is your line right there. This here is your raker. So this sharpener will sharpen here in the gullet and will we'll knock back the top of the raker. Uh, what the raker does is that's that's kind of your guide. So if you always just sharpen this and you don't file this down every once in a while, then this tooth's not going to have anything to grab when it gets into the wood. Um, I don't use this sharpener every time I do it. I like to do it by hand, just just the uh, the tooth part of it in the gullet. But uh, every once in a while, you you do need to do these and knock these rakers down so that they're kind of even. So that's what we're going to do today. It's been a while since I've done this one, so we'll, we'll do it. So I went ahead and marked it there, and all I'm doing is putting the file down. And again, I'm lining it up with that line. Sorry, I'm trying to do this while I'm holding this and showing it to you guys. I'm really sorry about that. So I'm lining up with that line, and once I have it lined up and it's at the right angle, I just take it across. I like to do mine four times. So I try to do, you want to do every single one the same. So if you do one three, you want to do them three. I like to do mine four. And you're pushing a little hard into it. You want to see some metal shavings come off as you do it. That means you know that you're, you're getting enough of a dig in there. And again, when I line this up, this, this bar right here, I'm lining up with that line on the top of the tooth. So that way I have the correct angle. Yeah. And then you can always just take your finger and you can almost like want it to be kind of tacky. If it's kind of tacky, it means it's sharp. All right, so that means it's going to cut through some wood pretty good. And I got some oak that I'm cutting tomorrow at a buddy's house. And maybe I'll take you guys along with me at least let you kind of see how the saw does all right so there's that and that light keeps going out i apologize for that guys trying to get a little better with my video quality and things all right so now that i've done all those here i pull my chain bake break back and i just pull this forward until i get past the tooth that i did Now I have a new tooth here. So lock her down. Come back. Again, line up on that line. Take her across. And while I do this, I guess it'd be a good time. I had some people kind of question me and ask me why the name of my channel is Class Haven Farms when it doesn't necessarily look like I live on a farm. Well, you're right. I don't live on a farm. And the reason why the name of the channel is Class Haven Farms is I did it as a dedication to my grandparents' dairy farm. So those of you that don't know me, my grandparents had a 160-acre dairy farm. It was in Sykesville, Maryland, in Carroll County. 
and it recently sold in January of 2020 and it sold to a developer and has all the farmland that they have everywhere in Carroll County and all the other counties it's you know they're gonna put quarter acre millionaire houses on it because that's what they do now so my grandfather and grandmother bought that land back in 1952 and they raised their family there and it was the family dairy farm and every summer about three or four weeks every summer i would spend up on the farm with my grandparents me mom and peepop and uh, i will tell you guys it's probably where i got my work ethic it's where i learned how to try to be self-sufficient and learn how to do things on your own because anybody that knows uh you know they my grandparents were around for the great depression and um it was just a different way of life and i think a lot of times we take that for granted now i think people nowadays people just expect everybody else to do everything for them and that's not how i live my life i'll be in charge of my stuff so that is the reason that my channel is named class haven farms so a lot of the stuff that I do in this channel is sometimes stuff that I learned from my grandparents or it's just the way they lived and it's the way that I like to live. It's like the way I like to raise my kids. My wife is the same way. It's just how we are. And I figure along the way, if I can help you guys and show you something, then that's how it should be. Because I feel like we're, we lose that. We're losing that as a society. So that's another reason why I started this channel. Because you know what? Maybe I can help somebody here in the United States. Or maybe there's somebody in another country that's watching me right now. And the things that I'm doing might help them. And that's pretty cool. So that's why my channel is named Class Haven Farms. For anybody that was wondering. I would like to one day have a little small farm. I do have 20 acres that I've had for almost 10 years now. And eventually we're going to build on it. And I would like to get some beef cows. And obviously we already have the chickens. And uh, in a dream world, I'd love to be able to have my own equipment to bale some hay. And just kind of be able to take care of my own stuff. Maybe do some corn. But we'll see. So anyway, so now I've made her all the way around and done all the teeth, and they're pretty sharp. So now, what I would do is spin this around and do it on the other side. But I'm not going to bore you guys with that, because I feel like you've already been here long enough, and if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. So again, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and just kind of follow me along. If you like stuff that I'm doing, let me know. If you think I'm doing something wrong, let me know because I'm not perfect in this. So, guys, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.